Over here, we have the animal cell. And over here, we have the plant cell. From the plant cell, we move on to the animal cell and things that are specific to it. First, we have the cell membrane, which controls what can enter and leave the cell, as well as supports the cell. Next, we have flagella, which can help the cells travel. Next, centrioles turn sugar into carbon dioxide. Centrioles are used during cell division. The lysosomes digest waste, and animal cells tend to be rounded. Next, we have the plant cell and things that are specific to it. First, we have the cell wall, which protects and supports the cell. Then we have the chloroplast, which performs photosynthesis. Then we have a larger vacuole, larger than the animal cell, which holds water and food, and what also it also supports the cell. And most of them do not have flagella, which help the cells move. It also has centrioles, which are used during cell division. The opposite of animal cell, it turns carbon dioxide into sugar, and they tend to be square and angular. Moving on to the things that are common between them. The cytoplasm, which holds and supports the organelles. The nucleus, which contains DNA. The ribosomes, which make protein. The cell membrane, con which controls what can enter and leave the cell. The cytoskeleton, which has protein fibers and it supports the cell. Golgi bodies, which packages things for export from the cell. It also has endoplasmic reticulum, both rough and smooth. It's used for mRNA and protein transport. They're both eukaryotic cells, uh, so that's cells with membrane-bound organelles. They both have vacuoles, which hold water and food, and they both have mitochondrion, which converts glucose to ATP. Now the functions of the animal cell. An animal cell is the smallest unit in the animal and it makes up various tissues inside the animal. And there are hundreds of cell types in an animal, and they're specific to the location and function, which means if you have red blood cells, that would be in the bloodstream, or if you had brain cells, they would be in the brain, and they would work for the brain, as the red blood cells would work for the blood. And there are more than 200 types of cells in the uh, adult human. Next, moving on to structure. Animal cells are different than plant cells in terms of shape, uh, their organelles, and the covering that's protecting them. They are very circular in shape, but they do lack an outer cell wall, which a plant cell has. Because of that, the outside of an animal cell is flexible, and it's a membrane, so it can allow different things to pass through it. It's semi-permeable. There are other features that differentiate an animal cell from a plant cell, such as the presence of smaller vacuoles or the absence of plastids. Now, moving on to plant cells. First up, we have their function. Plant cells carry out different tasks that help keep a plant alive and healthy over the course of their lifetime. For example, the chloroplasts carry out photosynthesis. Plant cells are also the smallest unit in a plant. Now, there are a few key differences between plant cells and animal cells that you should know. For example, plant cells have cell walls, while animals don't. They're the only ones that have chloroplasts, and they're the only ones that have plastids. Plant cells, that is. Next, moving on to the structure. Plant cells have a rectangular shape that is always formed by the cell wall. Over here, we have our eukaryotic cell. And over here, if I can just zoom in, we have our anti-prokaryotic cell. From our anti-prokaryotic cell, we zoom out, and next, we move on to our eukaryotic cell. To begin our long list, we start with basic information. Eukaryotic cells are found in plants, animals, and fungi. 
they have endoplasmic reticulum, which again is used for mRNA and protein transport. They sometimes have cell walls, depending if the cell is in an animal or a plant. Animals have cell membranes, but plants have cell walls. It also has centrioles, which are used during cell uh, division. They have cilia and flagella, which aid cell movement. They also have Golgi complex, which packages things uh, in the cell for, um, for export. Sometimes they have lysosomes, uh, which digest waste. They have perioxomes, which harbor enzymes, and they just clean up the cell. It has a nucleus, which contains DNA, and they're made up of several chromosomes. Moving on to our anti-prokaryotic cell, we have some information about a prokaryotic cell. It's found in bacteria and canobacteria. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's made of a cell wall, which again supports the cell. It has cilia and flagella, which aid cell movement, and it's just made of one long DNA strand as opposed to several chromosomes found in a eukaryotic cell. Next, we have the things that the prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell share. We have the plasma membrane, which controls the movement of various substances, and they also share ribosomes, which make protein.